All right, guys. So, uh, so this is my listening presentation, and as I was thinking about today, I, I was thinking, well, it's my basic presentation, and it's also my advanced presentation. We keep it very simple, um, and I primarily try to uh, listen a lot and not be the person who's doing all the talking. This will obviously be a little bit different is I'm giving you my two cents on, on, on the presentation. Um, I actually take a too far approach with my listing presentation. So what that means is I uh, always first go and meet with the clients or the potential clients and do a walkthrough of their property. Um, I think that's really important uh, to do a, a walkthrough of a property, get a feel for the property, get a feel for the uh, potential clients, and also at that point hone in on what my formal presentation, my second meeting is going to be. And so, um, so I always say to the people when they call me, um, this is just going to be a meet and greet, a quick meeting, no more than a half hour, we'll do a walkthrough and, um, and, and get the flavor. Uh, in this meeting, I try to really weigh in on everything that's going to be of value for me on the formal presentation. So that means what the property looks like, how it's been improved or not improved, what I think they'll need to do to get the property ready, for a, a launch to the open market. Um, I also, at that point, uh, really get a sense of who they're going to be meeting with besides me, because I want to know what my competition is. I'll flat out ask them who I'm up against. And often that will, will give me some guidance in terms of what I'm really going to need to do in my formal presentation in terms of bells and whistles. If they frankly tell me that I'm up against uh, so-and-so in the local market who I know doesn't do a lot of advertising marketing, then I'm not gonna pull out local bells and whistles. If I find that I'm going up against a top agent uh, that's going to uh, do all the fancy footwork, then I'm gonna customize my formal presentation to really hopefully wow them with all the marketing added value that offered to the table. If I'm up against Compass, I might design my presentation a little bit differently than if I'm up against a, a local coal banker agent in Larkman Village, who even though they're good, I know they won't do a lot of extra value added. Um, so that's the time for me to really grow um, as I'm walking through getting to know the potential clients and getting to know the house. Um, and, and really, I think a lot goes into uh, the value of a property in terms of what they've done to the property. Have they recently updated the kitchen? Have they recently updated bathrooms? What are their systems like? Have they, they have new heating air conditioning? Have they built the foundation? Has it been 30 years since they replaced the roof? Um, all those things, have they, have they renovated the garage into a guest house, or have they even taken it to the next level and decided that it's such a problem with you, your permits, that will add value beyond the garage conversion. So a lot goes into that. At that same meeting, um, I'm also finding out what's their next move, why are they selling? Um, and is there an opportunity for me associated with it, what their next move is? Are they trading up? Are they trading down? Are they moving out of the area where I might be able to refer them? If they're moving to San Diego, can I refer them to a San Diego agent and maybe get a referral out of it? Um, or are they moving to another part of the country and I can do some digging and, and, and potentially uh, introduce them to agents in another area? Um, so are they, are they winding down and, and um, they're gonna go rent, but maybe they should they have a lot of value, uh, a lot of profit in the house, should they be buying an income property to get passive income? So all those things I like to 
that I've talked to them about in that preliminary meeting. The most important thing that I do besides really sussing up the house during that meeting is what do they think their house is worth? I never tell them what I think the house is worth in that first meeting. But what do they think the house is worth? And by the time I've walked through the house, because I've been doing this for a long time, I have a pretty good sense of what I think the house is worth. And I've also done my preliminary homework um, before I go to the, even to that meet and meeting. But, you know, it, it, you know, if it's a one point five million dollar house, do they and they think it's worth two million? Well, uh, we, I've got I've got a challenge on my hands. If if it's a one five house and they tell me, you know, uh, you know, I think it's worth one more, then I've got a much easier um, strategy in place for me when I come back, and then we we'll just talk about competitive pricing and and, uh, and how we get sold in multiple offers. Um, so that's really, I would say, uh, getting to the truth. That meeting is to get to the truth. Uh, now, in that meeting, sometimes I'll leave my presentation booklet with them, but not the actual meat and potatoes of the competitive market analysis that I will always bring with, with me in that formal presentation. And by the way, when, I, when I'm in that meeting and I'm getting to that truth, then I'm also deciding how I'm going to customize that formal presentation and the cops that I'm going to use to steer how I want to price it will also be based on uh, what they shared with me in that preliminary meeting. So, so, so that's the that's the first meeting. And so, before we dig into the the actual formal presentation, anyone have questions regarding that? All good? Clint, if you're talking, I can't hear you. And you had said in another time, another class, that if the people won't tell you who else they're talking to, how do you handle that? Well, I, well, I get that once in a while, but I rarely get that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and it kind of irritates me when they won't share that, because it's not like it's insider information. Um, I'll try and I'll try and I'll always, if they won't share that with me, I'll at least suggest that I'd like to be the last person to come in for my formal presentation. And, and uh, that way they can get all that they're getting from the other people. I think that I've honed my skills pretty well in my 21 years doing this, that I make a very good presentation. And, and frankly, I have a very, very high conversion rate with my listing presentation to sale. And, and so look, it's not ideal. I'd like to know what I'm up against, but I'm not always going to get everything I want. So I've just got to adjust and customize to whatever it is that's laid on the table. So, so that's pretty much how I'll, how I'll address that. Okay. Other questions? I'll also add that I always, I always when, I, when I sit down with all the rookies, I always share that one of the most important things I think that we as real estate agents can do, and unfortunately we weren't able to do it during COVID, is to see inventory. And especially in your in your geographical farm, I like to I like to pride myself in um, having seen just about everything that comes on the market in Hancock Park. Um, and if you, Michael Flanagan is here, he's, he's a very local agent. I see Michael in all my open houses, you know, and I know that Ken Hank is he's probably running his restaurant, but he's I just follow you around. That's yeah. all I don't go to any other open houses. <laughs> but anyway, you know, it's it, it's shocking to me that. And, and I'm, I'm sorry if I sound like I'm, I'm lecturing a little bit. And Clint, by the way, I see Clint, even if I don't have an open house and I'm out at open houses, I see Clint 
in every open house that's out there. And, and whether it's a $6 million house or, uh, or a million dollar house, he's out there pounding the pavement. And, um, and that is the one thing you can do to have a one up, especially when you're newer, uh, because these seasoned agents often won't go and look at, look at open houses. Um, Thank you. I see, I, I see just about everything in that park or about Village, Windsor Square, so that when I go on a listing presentation in this area, I can, I can speak to almost everything. If I'm going a little outside my area, um, and let's say I identified really three really good comps, but I wasn't able to, to ever see them, I might even drive by them. I might, an hour before I'm going to the house, I might go and I might drive by those, those houses because, you know, you can tell a lot also by driving by houses and, and seeing what the condition is of the exterior of the house. Um, I was talking about the landscaping, the windows, the doors. I, you know, you can size up sometimes a house by the front door, by the windows. So, you know, are they, are they less expensive windows or really expensive windows? And there are a lot of hints that you can get from that. So, so seeing, knowing the inventory, and if you don't have that advantage, then, then maybe taking additional stuff. Maybe you look at the old listings of, of when they bought it, but you don't know if, if, if you know what prudence is done. But any advantage you can get is really helpful. Seeing inventory is really helpful. Okay, so let's uh, let's jump into the presentation. Okay, so so when I go then for the formal presentation, now I've customized uh, my comps and I've customized my marketing uh, that I'm going to to put out there. Um, I don't spend a lot of time. I've got this my formal booklet and it's it's uh, branded for me. I don't spend a lot of time at the meeting with this. I always say to people, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit, uh, but I you can look at this at the leisure if you have questions, then, then you can feel free to talk. Okay, so first off, we'll whip through the booklet. And uh, Carly, so we can we can flip to my profile next. Okay, so my profile, um, I really don't spend any time on this because it's about their house and not about me, but I'll just point out quickly and uh, you know what some of my strengths are. I talk about my whatever my background is that might have helped me get to the place that I am in real estate. And so my business background, my marketing background, my finance background, whatever, whatever you have that you think is a particular strength, um, that's when you might bring that up in a profile. And, um, you know, whether or not you do, you know, more volume than any, anyone else in, in, in a specific area, or you lived in the area for X number of years, and you, you know the inventory area, whatever it is, you, you, you play on your strengths. Um, so I, I spent a second on that, about as much time as I just spent there. Uh, there was an article in Top Asia Magazine, frankly. I paid for it. I, I put it in there. They don't have to know that. Some magazine uh, did a feature on me. So I, I throw it out there. By the way, it was done 15 years ago. It's still there. <laughs> All right. It's a, no, so uh, probably you could put it to the the next one, top agent, the article. And by the way, it just talks about me in providing service and customer service. And I'll always emphasize that I'm here to provide a service to you and to roll out the red carpet to you and um, really, hopefully, be able to run circles around the majority of other agents in the industry. Whatever it is, that whatever your talking points are, use them as a strength and that's what I try to do. All right, so then the marketing, and this is this is probably a, a more important tool that I bring out and that's my marketing commitment next page here and the next page. And so I talk about everything that I'm going to do from a marketing standpoint. And this is where I've customized 
and decided how much money I'm going to spend on my marketing um, based on what my competition might be doing. And, and, and to Quinn's question before, what do I do if I don't know the other agents? Well, then I'm shooting in the dark and I'm probably going to throw out all the bells and whistles. And a little bit of that is buying a listing and spending a little bit more on marketing than I might if I didn't need to, but I don't know. So, that, you know, on this particular property, um, I'll talk about, you know, the typical things. I'll do the broker's caravan, I'll do the public open houses, but then digging into the marketing, I'll do in the multiple listing magazine that we have, that I think is the biggest waste of time and the biggest waste of paper, but it comes out every week. Um, if I have to, I'll, and it's a more expensive house, I'll offer a full page ad that's very expensive, mm -hmm. but I'll do it. And then there's showcase ads. It's all online. There's no reason for this magazine anymore, but but so be it. If I have to do it, I'll do it. I bring the full, I bring the magazine with me. I bring examples of the full page. Maybe it's not a really expensive property that the a double page um, of a color glossy, great photography. And, and, and you know that if I, if I'm on a really high end listing, then I'll bring that I'll bring that out, and I'll show them the other high end listing that I have. So it's not like I'm not doing my business. Um, some of the time, this is a little late, but a large one product I do advertising all the time. Heard that way. They actually just stop doing for that way. The large one platform, whatever it was or whatever it is in that market at the time that you're doing it. Um, I do a, a, a professional floor plan. Always on every listing, I have a professional floor plan done. I have a great photographer. I encourage people to go to my website and look at the, my more recent listings and things on, on, on nice properties. I'll always do daytime photography and trial photography. Now I'm not offering that up if it's, if it's if it's a very average house that doesn't photograph well, but for most properties, I, I'll do that. Um, we have uh, a social media person who does all my social media, and that's become uh, a little bit more important from a thousand missile standpoint. Um, and so we do everything and anything in social media. We have our website. There's the property website, the company website, all the links that, that you know go to all the other real estate um, websites, Silo and, and Trulian and Redfin, on all of those. And, and oh, by the way, I talk, even though every listing has it, I talk about it. Um, Aviv, who's on my team for many years, does all our social media. So we're always extremely up to date with Facebook and uh, whatever, uh, LinkedIn and every every social media website, Twitter, um, we do it all and we keep it very up to date. We need us on top of it seven days a week. And I think that's really important to, whatever you're gonna do, you need to keep it up to date. Um, and I know obviously I go to, a, um, I go to an MLS listing and I'll see the, uh, you know, it's two weeks on the market, and it's like the uh, looking at offers on a, a Tuesday, a week old. So, you know, you always have to be on top of it, up to date. And uh, in addition to social media, we do, uh, uh, we'll do a YouTube video, uh, we'll do, we'll do the virtual tours, although I don't like them personally. I'd rather have great photography and invite people to come to my open houses where it's a private showings and not just do a virtual tour to determine that they don't like the property. I think, I think sometimes those virtual tours, not virtual tours, it's about me. Yeah, 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 not a four. Yeah, not a four. Yeah. Um, so, anyway, I'm kind of shy with the next. Um, probably next page. And uh, other, you know, the we do signs, we do flyers, we do postcards. We have a, a couple thousand agents in a database of top agents. Um, we do uh, advertising in, in a, a 
website called TAN, Top Agent Network. Uh, so we, we, we do so much uh, to this property. We had a, uh, a World War II veteran. We were selling this one that was uh, 75 years in the family. And so we did this whole advertising spiel about Bud Rice and, and made it a little more special. And by the way, that, that particular property, I was, we went up against a lot of people, but uh, we really touched our hearts with a uh, tribute to the work we had. Um, uh, next is a calendar. This is just a generic calendar I bring with me. If we get the listing at that meeting, then we'll start talking about specific dates and we'll fill in the dates, just handwrite them. Then I go back to the office and then I formalize it and I'll send them. Uh, a formal calendar kind of action calendar. Uh, the next, uh, all these other pages are just samples. Oh, you can just flip quickly through until we get to the floor plan. And next page. And then this is the professional floor plan that I know you guys have seen. This is really, uh, really a, a nice feature that is not very expensive. So on a, a smaller house, it's $150 on a large house, five dollars square foot house, it's $250. Um, we always, always do that. Okay. Um, next is the tops. All these other things, aside from the market and commitment, I breeze through, I spend time on the market and commitment, and I spend a little bit of time on the tops. Now, there's a lot of details in the comps. And for those of you who want, I would do another separate meeting on how I do comps. And, but I don't spend a lot of time on this in the meeting. I find that most people just want to hear what you would price their property at. They don't, they don't really give a shit about all the details. And a lot of them won't even look at it or care. They want to know what you think their property is worth. And so based on that first meeting, then I'm going to customize. And by the way, if, if in my example, uh, there's a $1.5 million house, I think it's worth $1.5 million and they think it's worth $2 million. I'm going to bring comps that are going to beat them up and say your house is not worth $2 million. If they still think their house is worth $2 million after they look at the hard, the cold hard facts, I may not be the agent who's going to take the list of and I may encourage them to uh, go with someone else, but have a cancellation clause, and if it doesn't work out, let me come in as the second agent. And I have successfully sold houses being the second agent up and not the first agent up. And I watch them, you know, get beaten up, and get up and then get But that one don't talk about price. No, this is so. This is the this is the formal presentation now in the second meeting. Oh, so this, this is the second. This meeting. is all second meeting now, okay. and now it's really customized marketing, customized comps, and uh, and then and then. So, is it first so in time? this stage, do you, in this stage do you end up giving a number or not yet? Yes, absolutely. This is this is this is the last ten minutes. And whether or not I'm getting this listed. This is the last 10 minutes of my second meeting. So this you already saw the house in the first meeting. Say that again. You already saw the house in the first meeting. All right, yeah. So so the first meeting I walked through, uh, and maybe I wasn't very clear. So I walked through the first meeting. I got the lay of the land, I found out um, you know the quality of the house. I found out why they're selling. I hopefully found out, found out who my competition was. I took notes on, on all the systems, when they, when they replaced the roof, when, if it's copper plumbing, if it's 200 amp service, did they, do they have a sub-zero $12,000 refrigerator or do they have a uh, you know, $1,500 uh, Gen Air? You get all those details. Uh, for me to then go back, sit at my computer, and really customize my formal presentation and customize my marketing plan and 
customize the comps that I'm going to bring back in my formal presentation to steer the price. Gotcha. Okay. All right, and, and, and I will steer it, but I also, because I went in on that first meeting, I'll find out how much knowledge they have about the market and about their neighborhood. And I'll also decide how, by the way, when I, when I go through the comps and I pull out the comps that I'm going to use, I've taken notes on all of that too. I, I've scribbled out all my notes, especially when I've seen them, uh, as to why they may be perfect comp, a better property, an inferior property, what, what all the details are as they compare. Now, I'll also, just in case they're really, um, they're prepared, even, even properties that I may not use in my presentation, I may separately have some notes on just in case they throw me a curveball. And they say, well, well wait a minute. Uh, you know, what about what about that property one street over, one block up, and that property sold for one seven? How come that's not in here? And, and I, I would say quickly, well, uh, that your house is 15 minutes square feet, that house is two dollars per feet. That, it's 33% bigger. That's not a comp. I wouldn't consider that a comp. Oh, okay, now I get it. So I, I come in, I, not very many, not very many buyers are going to know as much as we know as agents. But many buyers or sellers better, sellers think they know more than the agents. <laughs> and you know, when I hear someone say, I, I bought and sold five houses. I'm like that's great that you know we do that and we do that in a, in a month. So and I don't say it that way, but you know we have a tremendous amount of experience uh, in terms of seeing tremendous amounts of inventory and knowing and knowing the marketplace. Any anything else before we that I wasn't clear on? Do you put pictures in the comments? Oh, oh yeah, so so all right. So, all right. So, hey, Carla, could you just go back? Okay, so this is uh, the wrong way, but, but this is the, the main property, and then these are all the properties that I would use. Now, I am not in my presentation going through these, I'm keeping this in a high level discussion. And, uh, and by the way, I'm also email these, not to them, but to myself, and then in that meeting sometimes, I'll forward those to the clients then there if they want to look at a specific property, then we can pull up and we can rifle through some photos. So if they'll say, they say, well, wait a minute, my house is better than uh, you know, Stearns, then I, I may open it up and I may pull the Stearns and show them the photos. And by the way, rarely do I do this. Uh, or I'll encourage them to do that after the fact. Did you create that after I did. I did that. And then, yes, if we did another, uh, we could do a whole presentation on this, but um, everyone has different style. Everyone does things differently. You know, I'm a numbers guy, so I, I do it a little differently. But yes, I pull this out, I customize, I customize the columns. I key into the price per square foot, so I have. With this price per square foot, the selling price per square foot, um, the square footage of the houses, the square footage of the lots, all that comes into play to determine the value of the house. All right, so then, uh, and by the way, I also, and I don't have it in this presentation, but I'll also do uh, a worksheet that gives trends of, of the area. So, for instance, they bought a house in 2015. And it's 2021, and the market's up 22%. And they didn't do anything to their house. Their house is probably up 22% of their house. And so we might do another analysis that gets a little more statistical and gives, gives some guidance on pricing. So then uh, we don't go through property by property. And Carly, if you could go to the, just the second to last page. And so then this is the last, this is the last thing I do. 
and I have a range uh, based on the price per square foot, a range of, of uh, selling prices per square foot. And then I show a range of the low range to the high range. And typically I steer them right to the middle of this range. And in this particular property, um, this, this, these owners, it was a family that inherited the property. Uh, they wanted to, they wanted to list the property with money. They went up against another agent. Who, I went up against two other agents who said one eight. I said, you cannot list this property a penny over one seven. If you overprice it, you're going to chase the market down. And, and by the way, this was a referral from a really good client of mine. So I, I knew I had a little bit of credibility. And um, and so on this particular one, I knew we couldn't price it too high. Uh, we did end up pricing it at below one seven, and we ended up selling it in multiple offers at one six fifty. And um, and so that was how we got to the end of this one. So that is that's the presentation. Uh, in terms of my first appointment, that's usually about a half hour meeting. And the formal presentation, I try to keep it to the word of three minutes. If it goes longer, it's, it's going way too long. If it's a friend of mine that I uh, pass by, we might be chatting, but I, I am no nonsense, all business. Not chit chatting and getting right to the point, and I'll keep the meeting move, moving along. Also, I always uh, insist on all decision makers in the meeting. And now that we've been introduced to Zoom, there's no there's no excuse why the decision makers all should be at the meeting. They can't be there in person, then they it needs them to be there on a Zoom call. And uh, I don't need them there at the, at the first meeting necessarily, but I always need them there at the second meeting. And I've had I've had five family members selling selling their a property that they inherited, and, and I have five people on the call. And so as a lawyer, I encourage them to have a lawyer on the call um, when I'm Zoom or in the meeting. Um, on a on a formal meeting, I don't need to go to the house. So I can go to I can go to a I can go to a business, I can go to whatever it takes. If, if one of the, if, if there's two partners and one of the partners that, you know, has, is working 12 hour days, fine, I'll go to their office and I'll sit with them and hopefully the other party can follow what's going on there. Um, questions before I uh, give you some wrap up thoughts. Um, Um, when I when I do my advertising, I will will do a flyer that becomes maybe the full page of the MLS, maybe maybe in a page of network. Uh, I'll try to I'll try to use it as as efficiently as I can. And then, frankly, the answer is I don't know the certainty because because uh, because of being really the things in those all the marketing does a good job. So, so maybe we need another meeting this week. <laughs> so they, they, uh, she was just asking about the, the marketing and how we might streamline with our flyer and, and what we use for each piece. What else? Hey, uh, how often does a, a seller ask you at the first meeting, can, can we just go ahead and sign a listing agreement? And, and I'm presuming well, I shouldn't presume. Would you go ahead and take the listing agreement? No, no, no. I, um, Tim, I never uh, bring a. Some people want to ink, ink the contract right there and then. I, I don't. I personally don't use that style. I I, I just I, I I come from a place of it. If, if I'm confident enough that they want to whisk with me, they'll sign with me, and I'm not worried 
that they might, because I wasn't forceful enough, get the listing. And, and you know, if 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 if, if they want a, a really therapeutic aggressive agent, then they may not go with me and they will go with that person who who threw the pushed the contract on them and tried to uh, get the sign right there. I, I, I don't go that route. I just I don't. And if they want to go with me, and by the way, I say to them, um, why are you talking over privately? I hope that I earn your business and I'll wait for your call. And if you if you do, then we'll uh, we'll get the contract sent over to you via doctor sign. Now the other thing, commission, obviously we talk about commission, and uh, that's not on here, but uh, commissions for me are are Anywhere between five and six percent, I will never take a, a transaction under five percent ever. And if they if, if if they ask me to and they insist on it, I will flat out say to them, "Look, I'm not the same way. I'm going to represent your best interests. I'm not going to roll over now and compromise my standards or my negotiating skills." And so, never will I go below five. What I often do. If I can't get six, is I will um, encourage, especially if we're, we're um, pricing for multiple offers. And by the way, I'll always, always try to price for multiple offers. I think it's, it's the best method of, of getting top dollar. And that, that's a, a very important conversation when we're looking at pumps. So um, I'll often create a bonus program for myself. Yeah, let's say for argument's sake on that one five house, I think we'll get multiple bars and maybe we'll get over one six. And I know they'd be thrilled with one six. I, I'll say that in that regarding the commission, what I'd like to set up is a win-win. If you and I achieve both our goals and I exceed those goals, then then I'd like to be compensated. And so I might say if I get you over one six, I'd like I'd like to up a high portion three percent. And when I get that, uh, well, it depends on the market. Sometimes I'm more successful than others. I'm not going to not take it. I won't not take a listing at five, but I will not. Take it five. Any other thoughts or questions? All right. So, so in recap. Um, Look at my notes here. I, I never overcommit. I won't. I, I, I don't want to be the guy that takes the list and gets beat up. I think that wears on us and it's not healthy. And I have, I have a, um, a way of doing business. And one of, my, one of the things I do, if I lay in bed at night stewing over a buyer, over a listing, over not working out, and I know it's it's taking me be away from my core business. Something has to change. Either either I'll have a really uh, well come to Jesus where I really lay it out the line, and it, it's either going to change course or, or it's not a good partnership. So I don't overcommit. I tell the truth. I'm very very candid. I'm very candid about my pricing. I know what properties will sell for, and so I won't take that really bad listing. Now, I, I'm an escrow right now on a property at Rossmore that some people might say, oh, well, you're, you're contradicting yourself, you just put that listing, and you go up the price it. Well, that was, that was a partnership with the sellers, and we were all up for it. We all knew that the property was probably going to sell from the low fives, and the sellers wanted to price it at six initially because they were motivated sellers. And I said, Look, if we get the pie in the sky and the needle ASAP, we'll take it. But we don't really even want to sell that. So, would you be willing to do that in, in partnership with us, go that route? And I said, Yes, that's fine. Let's do that. And then, and then we finally got it to a place where they were motivated to sell. We priced it right. And we put the right so, so that's that would be a deception, but um, I I try to get all my properties sold within the first two weeks. 
And I, I would say like 95% successful in paying off my property sold in the first two weeks with multiple offers. Um, so don't overcommit. And don't take a bad listing. I told you that I will try to get in second position if they're not realistic. Uh, much better though the second round that I encourage them to get a cancellation clause with their first listing so they can cancel and they relist. <laughs> and I would say, you know, you're going to be two months in with a sale listing, let me relaunch it as a fresh listing with the agent. Um, I don't do this as often as I used to, but I used to practice listing presentations a lot with, with better agents than me. And I would encourage you guys to do that. No, no different than doing scripts with cold calls before and after. Doing listing presentation is, is absolutely more important as you as you're going on your on your practice. Um, uh, there, you know, I, I'm sure Rob may set up things like that. Um, I I worked with another coach who I've coached with for 18 years. Um, Always had us in the room and switching it up and, and, and see presentations. And it really forces you to try to solve. The other thing is, um, you don't need to read about the deal in this business. There's always someone doing it better. So, you know, replication is, 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 is the way to do it. I, early on in my career, there was a, uh, I was flipping through. One of those fancy glossy booklets, and there was a guy from Newport Beach that every other listing was his listing. It, it, it was this guy, John, John McGonagall. And John McGonagall, he, he had hundreds of millions of dollars worth of listings. And so I picked up the phone and I called him and I said, Look, I'm newer to the business. And I got the message from him, newer to the business. I would love to come down to Newport Beach. And pick you up for lunch one day or maybe a phone call or anything to maybe just pick your brain a little bit. This guy called me back 10 minutes later, he spent a half hour on the phone with me and told me about all the things he did. I subsequently got to meet him because he was involved in, in, in the same uh, coaching program. And, uh, and boy, this guy was blown on fire. And the way he got business was, and, and granted, look, when you're newer to the business, especially, you don't have necessarily financial. But um, he had a postcard mailing to every house in his geographic farm every 10 days. So, if anyone was thinking about selling their home, if they had any thinking about John and whether or not they should call him to meet him, because I mean, who wouldn't be impressed with the volume of business he was doing? So, um, so, anyway, no need to read about me. So, that's, uh, that's my that's, that's spiel. Thank you so much. All right, guys. All right, thank you. All right, any other questions? Feel free to call me, email me, um, and I'll get back to you. Thank, thank you. you so much. I got right to speak. Nice to meet you. Congrats. Oh, thanks. Yeah. What did you do? Oh, I got it. Oh, I got a listing. Oh, no big deal. Yeah. What did you get? 